Baruch Hashem, today's Daf Yomi is Bamatsia 102, Bamatsia 102. Today's Daf Yomi, we're going to start on top of 102A. It's dedicated for a Yeshua for Am Yisrael, Atzala for the Shuyim, Shmira for the Chayalim. So we're on 102A at the top. Satan Rabbanon, the rabbis taught, Hamas Yerbayis L'Chavero. Somebody rents a house to his friend, the tenant has to make the mezuzah. When he leaves, the tenant is not allowed to take the mezuzah with him. Why is that? The commentaries say several reasons. One is because then the demons will come into the house, or perhaps it's because at that point, once the tenant leaves, the... Uh, um, it'll be it'll be dis- it'll be like destruction that you're doing, where the divine presence is going to depart. But if you if you're renting it from a non-Jew, then no tlabiyada. Then you take it away because because we're concerned that maybe the non-Jew won't treat it properly. Uh, she says. Uh, um, but so th- then the concern is that you won't treat it properly. So then then you can take it with you. And there was once an incident, the person took it. There was once a case where a person took it and he ended up having to bury his wife and two children. Umar says, wait, my solicitor, we just said you're allowed to take it when you leave the non-Jew. So Umar says, I'm that refers to you take it from the Jewish home. And the law is that you are allowed to uh, ask them to pay for it. They don't have to. Now, when we say that you, you have to leave the mezuzah, it should be obvious to people, but I'm saying it because I've gotten a lot of questions about this. The mezuzah, we refer to the parchment called the cloth. The case itself, you're allowed to take. That's not the, that's not the holy part. The parchment is what you have to leave there. So the Gemara says, uh, I just want to point out that Tosos here says, Mikan nira kamosha shemanichna mezuzah me'umod. So he says there's a dispute in, in um, uh, Tosus points out that there's a dispute in Menachos. Do you put the, the mezuzah straight up like this or like this, horizontal or vertical? Vertical like Rashi, horizontal like Tosus. And so for this reason, we have the practice, uh, Shulchan Aruch says, to put it on a slant, Rama says. So we, therefore, we're fulfilling both of their obli- both of their positions. Or actually, we're fulfilling neither of their positions, but neither one of them is for sure wrong that way. So this is the first thing you see when you come into a home is a compromise. So, but from this Gemara, it seems to be like Rashi because it's holding straight, because you said in the Gemara right before, you hang it on a thing. So hanging it is up and not, Horizontal, but it's possible that you hang it sideways too. So anyway, okay. If you go in Jerusalem, you see a lot of places where it's straight up because the minog of your shalayim is to put it straight up. Okay. I've never seen it horizontally, but I do I do see it straight up. Okay, so so the Gemara asked the question. Gemara says. So the, the Gemara says as follows. Hazevel Shabalabayas, the manure, it said in the mission that the manure belongs to the owner of the house. And the uh, renter only has the part that comes out of the oven or the stove. But my skin, what are we talking about where we say the owner of the courtyard gets the the landlord gets the manu- the manure. If we have a chutzur to agir away with socher, we're talking about a courtyard that was rented to the tenant. The turei de socher and the uh, and the uh, ox belongs to the tenant. My shabal bias. Why do we say it goes to the owner? Uh, obviously, it goes to the tenant. Al bechutzur de agir with socher v'tori de masgir. If you want to say it's a courtyard that was not typically rented out, and we want to say the ox belongs to the tenant. Pshita, isn't it obvious? So the Gemara says, no, we're talking about a case. What's the scenario of our Mishnah? The courier belongs to the landlord. The courier belongs to the landlord. And the ox is coming from uh, just anywhere. And and the ox is just 
standing there. I mean, say he didn't rent out the courtyard and now an ox comes in and standing there and producing manure. So therefore, and this is indeed proof for Rabbi Yosi Bar Chanina, the Amr Rabbi Yosi Bar Chanina, Chatzar Shal Adam Kono Shal Midaitu. So we're saying here that the owner of the courtyard is acquiring the manure even without his knowledge. The guy has a courtyard, but he lives far away. And the cow comes in and produces manure there. And we say it's the owner of the courtyards, even though he's not there. And this is therefore a support, Messiah, this is a support for Rabbi Yosi. Who says, but we have a problem for this. The person wants to say, all the possessions that might come into my courier today will come in, will be mine. He hasn't said anything because since he doesn't know which, which possessions are coming in, he can't acquire it that way. That's not a valid way of acquiring things. The Misa Lahad Rabbi Amar Rabbi Yosi Barachanina. And if it's really the case that without which Rabbi Yosi Barachanina says is accurate, and if that's the case, then the courtyard should acquire without his position, without his without his knowledge. So the Gemara says, Am I In that case, why has he not said anything? So the Gemara says, No. What's the reason why we were talking about in this case that the courtyard doesn't acquire it if he just says, Whatever comes into my possession, let my courtyard acquire? Because we're talking about a case because we're talking about a case where the courtyard doesn't have a fence around it, it's not protected, and so therefore it can't acquire anything. He has to have it in its protective fence. And where it says, well, if that's the case, what's the next cause? If there is a, if there is, let's say, news in the town that there was, let's say, a deer that was that broke its leg and is in your in your in your yard, or let's say a lot of fish washed up onto your onto your yard. Then it's going to be considered his. But e because they're shaining mishdameris. But if it's like you're saying that the scenario of our brisa is that it's a unwatched courtyard, then kiyatzol uh, shem mitzia beir my havik even the yatzol shem mitzia. So what does he care? It's not a watched courtyard, so he shouldn't be able to acquire it. So the gemara explains no. Even the yatzol shem mitzia beir because the word got out that he had this thing that there's animals that are available in his courtyard uh, that that. Became uh, his basically. Mivdal bedilei in shimidei vavlei to chatzar mishares. People are going to say, "Oh, that's his his good luck." I'm going to I'm going to separate it from him, and it's like his courtyard is watched. So the Gemara says another attempt to challenge Rabbi Yosi Barchanina's pr- principle, who says uh, a courtyard of a person acquires something even without his knowledge, because we learned meisvei zevo ayotze minat tanor uminaki rayim vakol minat avir areu shelo. Let's say, the Bryce says, let's say you have the manure that comes out of the stove or the oven, the, the biofuel, um, or we have the uh, something that was absorbed in the airspace of a place, it's going to belong to the uh, tenant. And, and in the barn in the courtyard, that belongs to the Baalabayas. And if you're going to say that the person's like Rabbi Yosef Rechanina, that a person's courtyard acquires with even without his knowledge. Why does the uh, why does the we're talking about a case where it was the tenant grabbed it out of the airspace? But if you're saying the courtyard acquires without its uh, without his knowledge, then let the owner of the courtyard acquire it when it's in the airspace of the courtyard. Why can the tenant have the right to grab something from the air? Once it's in the air, the owner of the courtyard should have acquired it. So the Gemara explains, Amar Baye b'mad v'kli b'shulei par. No, it's where you basically you put the bucket under the uh, under the uh, cow, so the the stuff never hits the ground, and so therefore he's acquired it right away. So the Gemara, the ten is acquired right away because it goes right into his bucket. Rava says, Av Yoshein Sofa Onuach Lav Kamunach Dami. Rava gives a different answer. He says. Since it was never going to fall down because he grabs it from the airspace and it was going through the air, so therefore it was never intended to land on the ground. So it's not like the owner was going to get it ever because it was never going to land. So that's another idea. Basically, you're throwing something through the courtyard. Since it wasn't going to land, the owner doesn't hasn't acquired it. Mar says, "Wait one second. Is is it clearly obvious to Rava that if 
something was just flying through the airspace, it's not going to be considered like it's on the ground. But didn't Rava want to ask this question? How so? Rava had this question because to buy Rava, Rava wants to ask, because a guy makes his wallet ownerless and he decides to throw it through the uh through through basically one door to another. Goes through the courtyard, throws it from one end of the courtyard to the other one. Mao, do we say Avir Shain Sofu Anuach Kamunach? I mean, Olav Kamunach. I mean, do we say well, since it's going from one end of the courtyard to the other, it's going to be considered like it is, uh, like it is placed on the ground or not? So, and Rava wasn't sure. So, why do you say here? Rava is assuming that it's not like it's placed on the ground. The Kamara says, "Awesome, well, Mivsak, well, Midi." But their their case is different because there was nothing that was in, interposing between it and the ground. But Acha Mivsak Kui. Here we put the utensil in front of it, so therefore it's clearly never going to end up on the ground. And and not only that, there's a clear interposition between the ground and it. So therefore, Rava said, in this case, it's certain that the that the airspace is not enough for the courtyard to acquire it. So that is kind of relevant. You're in an airplane, there's something underneath you, so it's there's an interposition, so it wouldn't acquire it. So now the Gemara says, uh, Rafat. Um, what's the next case? If it's in the barn in the courtyard, it belongs to the owner of the courtyard. Tarti, do you need both? You need it to be in a barn in the courtyard. So Amar Bay, this is what the Bryce is saying. If it's in the barn in the courtyard, then it belongs to the owner of the courtyard. Amar Vashi is teaching us the law. It's teaching us the law that if you rent out your courtyard without specifying what you're renting out, you haven't rented the barn. Okay, fine. Now the Gemara is still challenging Rabbi Yossi Barachanina's position, which is that a person's um, uh, courtyard acquires something for him without his knowledge. So the Gemara says, let's challenge this. Can a person's courtyard really acquire something from him without his knowledge? In Maysway, we have the Braitha, which tells us, Mesve, the Brahsa tells us, Yone Shuvach, the Yone Aliyah, Chayavos Peshiluach. So let's say we have now the mitzvah of Shiluach Hakan, that it says in Devarim 22 6, that if you have come across a bird on the road and, and the mother is, is, is over the chicks, over the eggs, you're not going to take the mother before you send away the mother to take the chicks or the eggs. So let's say, Yone Shuvach, the Yone Aliyah, let's say you have the. Um, the doves of the uh, Yoni Shobach for Yoni Aliyah. Let's say you have the doves that are in the dove coat. They're in like these, or the, they're staying on the roof. Chayavos Beshiloch. So these types of doves, nobody owns them, so therefore they're obligated to send it away. We only say the, pro, the mitzvah applies when they're not owned. So in this case, these are not these are not birds that are owned, so you have to send them away. But still, Asuras Begazel. Even though they're not owned, you can't steal them because it's kind of like in his possession. So you're not allowed to steal them because it would not bring peace to the world. And if you're going to say that, like Rabbi Yossi Rachanina, that says, if you're going to say that the person's courtyard acquires them without his knowledge, then even though they're not his, but they're in his courtyard, so he should acquire it. And if that's the case, if they acquire without his knowledge, then he shouldn't be able to. Uh, then he shouldn't be able to do the mitzvah because they're they're a person. It's already in his possessions. How can you do the mitzvah of sending it away? So don't we see from here that you don't the courier doesn't acquire it without his knowledge? So Amarava beitza biitzias ruba hu dechayvula b'shiluch umiknei b'shiluch umiknei lo kanya ad nafol chatzero. So he says, an egg once it uh, once it um, once it comes the majority out of the mother, that's when you have to do the mitzvah of sending it away. But you don't have you haven't acquired it until it falls to the ground. And when we're saying you're obligated to do the mitzvah of shiluach, that's only in this in the space before it falls to the ground. So in between the egg popping out of the mother. 
that's when you have to do the mitzvah of shiloh. But once it would actually go on to the courtyard, then you wouldn't have to do the mitzvah. Yeah, if that's the case, amaya suras mishum gezel. Why are you not allowed to steal it? If a person doesn't own it, why can't you steal it? Mara says, well, two answers. First is uh, iman. It means that the mother is is kind of in your uh, courtyard. So that's the one you can't steal. Or you buy this ema, well, ema baits him. You can't steal the eggs. Even though he hasn't acquired it yet, once the majority comes out, his, his mind is on it. Mark explains, But now that we have a teaching from Rabbi Yudha in the name of Ram, that you're not going to acquire the eggs as long as the mother's on them until you send it away. It says, And then take the mother. I feel Even if it fell to the courtyard, uh, the says, well, even if it fell to the courtyard, you can't acquire it yet because you first have to send away the mother bird. So you still haven't acquired it, so you could steal it. Yeah, if that's the case, that's where spaghetti need dark show them. So if that's the case, why would you say it's uh, it's uh why do we say it's prohibited to take because of dark is show them? It can't be. Either shalcha, if you had actually sent it away, gezam alyu, then it's really theft because it's your eggs. And either those shalcha, and if you hadn't sent away the mother, then why is it not that nobody else allowed to steal the eggs? I buy shlucha. You haven't acquired it yet. You would have to send it away first. So Gemara mm-hmm. says, well, the answer is that what we're talking about here is bekatan. Be- we're talking about it, it says, what does it mean that you know how to take it because of darkei shalom? That's talking about where it's the miners, the miners' eggs. And the katan is not obligated in the mitzvah of sending away the mother. So therefore, he's acquired it because he doesn't have to send away the mother. Because in the ba, the, uh, so the lab bar shilochi. So the Gemara asks the question, cotton bar darke shamu. But but still, you know, I take from the cotton because of ways of peace. Where it says hachikamar avim shal cotton. The father of a of a, a small child is chayiv zero has to give it back to the person who. The father of the cotton uh, has to get. We're talking about a case where the cotton took it, and and so therefore, uh, and so the the father of the miner has to give it back to the owner of the courtyard. Mimne That's what we're talking about. The father of the miner has to return. You're talking about someone's private courtyard. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not the nest, the egg. The egg is acquired. The egg only is acquired once it falls to the ground. So the scenario of the Gemara is where the the mother drops the egg and it hasn't hit the courtyard yet. That's what the Gemara says. That's the Ukimta. You wouldn't want to strangle the mother. Well, maybe it doesn't have a fence around it, so so you, you didn't stop them from coming in, so they can answer that question. You let the people come in, but whatever. So he's not allowed to go into your courtyard, okay? But we're talking about the egg here now, it's a trespass. But the point is that he, the scenario of the Gemara we said is once the egg comes out the majority, then he doesn't own it yet. But it only he only acquires it once it hits the ground, and there's the midst of Shilu Hakan. Once it comes out the majority. That was the strange ukimta that the Gemara came up with. So, and then, and it's with where our minor was the one who went to take it. Okay, next case. Somebody who rents a house to his friend, he says, I'm renting it for a year. Let's say it became a leap year. The tenant gets it. And then put a date on the, on the contract. This girlo uh and let's say he rented it for months, Nisabra Shana, Nisabra Maskir. If he rented it for twelve months, and then and now we have a leap year, so it's an extra month, Nisabra Maskir, the 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 landlord gets it because he did months. There was an incident in Sipori. Somebody rented out a bathhouse, but Shnema Zarzav was Shana. She said, I'm renting it out for 12 months for 12 gold coins for the year. 
one gold coin per month. So, on top of 102b, they came, they brought this incident before and they said, split the last month. So, Yomar says, one second, why are we bringing me an incident to uproot what we just said? We just said that in the beginning of the Mishnah that the, the tenant gets the additional month. And it's not like that. It's also not like the landlord where the where it says that the landlord gets the additional month. And here we're saying that you split it. That's not like either one. So is a story that's contradicting the both teachings. So Amar. So the Gemara says, Amar Lo. Excuse me, Gemara says, Hachik um Chisuri Mersa. The text is missing words. This is what our mission means to say. Vim Amar Lo Bishnei Masar Zehuvim Lashana Midinari Zayav Chodesh Yachoko. But if he uses this language, twelve gold coins for the year, one gold coin for each month, then you split it. And indeed, this was the incident. Okay, so they explain it. Then you need to add in that phrase if they use that language. So the Gemara says, "But I'm a Rav. Rav says, if I would have been there, I would have given everything to the landlord." Why is he saying I'm going to give everything to the last landlord? Because he says the last thing he said was one month, one gold coin per month. So that's like what the landlord's saying. Michael Mashwan, so what's Rav teaching us? That you have to, that if a person says two things, you follow the last thing he says. Is that what he's teaching us? Didn't Rav already tell us this one time? Didn't Rav already tell us this? So the Amar of Huna Amri Bey Rav Astira Meya Meya, but if he says Astira Meya 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 Mai, so basically didn't Rav already say this one time Astira Meya Mai? He says Astira is a coin uh, of basically is a seller of the coin. Meya is uh, Mai or one hundred prutos, and the guy says I'm either giving you for this Astira or Meya Mai. Then we say, we follow the last thing you said, which is mei amai. But if he says mei amai astira, then we go by astira. So Rav already told us we, we follow the last uh, thing the person says. The Gemara says, no, imei hasam, that's not a proof to Rav's position. Because if it was just based upon that, I might have thought that the person is saying what the astira is or what the mei amai is. He's just explaining it. So Rav is telling us now, that we follow the last thing. Shmuel, I'm aware of Shmuel says, Shmuel says no. Shmuel gives a different answer. Shmuel says, the Baba Emsa Chodesh Askinan. We're talking about a case, Shmuel, says Shmuel, where, where the tenant comes to make his claim in the middle of the month. That's where we're going to say, uh, that's where we're going to say this halacha. Rashi says, when he says to him, Rashi says, Say me, Pesi, go out from my house or give me the money for this month. And and, and we're and uh and and where we're not sure which language take place, we say put the money on its presumptive status. And so therefore we don't make him pay uh for what he's already lived there, but we we say if you want to go on further, you have to pay. So that's what Shimon's talking about. But if he would come in the beginning of the month, then the landlord after the landlord would get everything. But if he come at the end of the month, cool is so hard. Everything would go to the tenant. So he says, Shmuel really say we don't grab, but we don't follow the last thing he says. But Rabbi Shmuel, Isn't it Rabbi Shmuel? Both of them said, If he says, I'm selling you a bushel. For thirty sela, and then he's counting it out. He could always change his mind until it's all given out because it goes by the last thing he said. But kor b'shloshim seya b'sela ani mocherocha. But then he says, "I'm selling you a kor b'shloshim seya b'sela." Each seya is one seya, and then he's counting it out. Rishon rishon kana. The first thing acquires, and so we see from here. 
that Shmuel also says, you follow the last thing he says. The person says, no, how some time am I Mishum the toughest? No, there the reason is because the guy grabbed hold of each one after each time. So that's why he acquired it. It's because he was toughest. It. So the Gemara says, the Rav Nachman Amar, Rav Nachman gives a different answer. To answer this question that Rav Shmuel are answering, that why in this case do you split it? Where he says, uh, where they came before him, and he says one gold coin per month after he had said 12 gold coins for the year. Rav Nachman says you split it, Rav Nachman says that we're going to say Rav Nachman says uh, when he when he mentions both months and years we are, we're going to say under those, under those circumstances that the tenant has to pay the landlord uh, not that they split it and the reason is because the, the land is in the, in the presumptive status of the owner and so, therefore, the tenant is living in his friend's courtyard, his friend's house, and he has to pay for him. My kamash, Moan. So, what's Rav Nachman saying? Tfos Lash Nachman. Is he saying we follow the last thing? Hainu the Rav. That's what Rav is saying. Where says, no. Afogav the apich meipach. He would say, even if he said in the reverse, meaning the last thing he said was 12 for the year, we would still make him reverse it. That's what Rav is saying. So, Gemara says, by me name, Rabbi Yanai. We asked the question from Rabbi Yanai. Let's say the tenant says, I paid, and the landlord says, no, you didn't. Who's the one who has to bring a proof? So the Gemara says, okay, I know you want to know the answer to this question. We'll leave it for tomorrow. Anybody have any questions before we stop? Okay, so 